Hi, and thanks for joining. If you're new here, I'm Wendy and this is Nina's Jewels. My husband and I buy things at garage sales, flea markets, thrift stores, just about anywhere we can find things to sell online and flip for a profit. If that's content you're interested in, you're in the right place. Today's video is going to be what sold for October 22nd through 28th. But before we get started, we're giving away this iconic home studio ring light to one lucky subscriber. To enter, you must follow these rules. Be a U.S. resident, be a subscriber, like this video, and comment below with your favorite item from this video's what sold list. A winner will be randomly selected, then announced in our Friday, December 2nd video. Good luck. All right, let's get started with what sold. The first thing that sold was a Canon camcorder. We got this at a garage sale where we got three identical camcorders, just like this one. And two of them were priced separately. And then one of them was in this big box of camera equipment. So we paid $20 for two of them or $20 each for two of them. And then a lower price for the other one. I'm not sure why she had them priced that way, but this was one of the ones that was marked at $20. So we paid $20 for this one. And this is, I think this might be the third of the three that, that sold, but we have sold all of them. This was a great purchase. I would have paid $20 each for all three of them. Uh, they sold very, very fast and camcorders are a great pickup for us. We always pick them up when we see them, whether the seller says that they're working or not because they will sell as is or in working order. These we were able to test all of them and we knew that all of them worked. So that allowed us to ask a little bit higher of a price. This one sold for $84.99, which was our full asking price, but the buyer did apply a 15% off promotion that we were running this particular month on electronics. The next thing that sold was called the Expositor's New Testament Bible by Jimmy Swagger Ministries. It was a small leather bound Bible that we picked up at a thrift store for 81 cents and it sold almost immediately for $12.99, which was our full asking price. Next up was a Tagua, I seriously doubt I'm saying that correctly, but it was a gun leather black softy um, concealed carry gun holster that we found in the storage auction that we purchased the entire unit for just $30. And that if, um, if you haven't seen that video, I will link that in the description box below. It seemed like it was just a bunch of junk in that unit and primarily it was, but we have made tons of money on that storage auction and we are definitely going to purchase another auction soon. I'm not sure when, but I would say in the next month or month or two, definitely going to be on the lookout for another storage auction. Even if they don't look impressive, you can make lots of money on a storage auction. You just have to put in a little bit of work to go through the items and be willing to, you know, just do the work and put together lots and things like that. We made lots and lots of money on that little unimpressive $30 unit. And we found this item in and amongst, I think, a bunch of clothes or something. But this sold pretty quickly for $29.99. And we had broken down our cost of goods for each of the items in that unit at either 23 or 24 cents. I was just trying to make my math work. This one was on my spreadsheet at 23 cents. Next up was another item from that storage unit. And it was a Trader Joe's canvas reusable tote bag. And if you ever see these anywhere, this is a bolo item. This had a like, I think 100% sell through rate. This is the colorful fruits and vegetables pattern. When I looked this up, all of them were selling. The one that we had had some stains on it. So I ran it through the wash and it sold immediately for our full asking price of $24.99. So if I ever see any of these ever again anywhere, I'm definitely picking that up. Next up was a pair of No Boundaries, brand new with tags, women's Christmas tree print leggings. They had a, they looked like they were like quilted or embroidered leggings, but they were just printed on there. They were not expensive at all, but they were brand new with tags. Um, I had gotten these from somebody on Facebook Marketplace. I think I paid a dollar for them, intended to keep them for myself, but 
They just sat in my closet. I never wore them and then just eventually sold them on a best offer for $7 even. Got positive feedback on those. Next up was a little camcorder cleaning kit that we got at a garage sale. It was brand new, had never been used. We got that for 50 cents at a garage sale and it sold for our full asking price of $19.99. Next up was another garage sale purchase. This was a brand new package of Avery postcards. And these we had paid $2 for and they sold for our full asking price of $19.99. Next up was a lot of two TCU Horn Frogs women's t-shirts. These were mine. I just did not wear them. So I decided to sell them. TCU is having a really good season. So I decided to strike while the iron is hot on that. These sold for our full asking price of $19.99. Next up was a pair of Via Spiga women's brown woven leather mid calf vintage boots. I think they were vintage. I didn't have that they were vintage in the listing, but they seem to be vintage. These were made in Italy, very high quality. We got these at the Hoarder Estate Sale. We paid $4 for these and they sold pretty quickly on offer to buyer for $52.48. Next up was something that we had parted out. We had picked up a skip bow game in the Goodwill bins and it had, it I don't remember. I think we picked it up. It seemed like it appeared to be complete or I don't know. It was might have been one of those things that ended up in our cart by accident. I don't know. We probably have a video of it from a really long time ago. But it, but anyway, when we got it home, we realized it wasn't complete. And actually, I think it not only was it not complete, but it had extra parts somehow. So it was like incomplete and had extra parts. It was weird but we decided to part it out. So we parted it out and I don't think we have ever sold anything from that parting out of that game except for these, which was these 11 replacement skip bow number one cards. The buyer paid $9.79, which I think was our full asking price, but they had maybe applied a coupon that we had sent to them. Um, and we had paid 92 cents for these at the Goodwill bins that day. We had averaged out our cost of goods. Unfortunately, these got lost in the mail and the buyer was very nice about it. They contacted us and said that the tracking just was kind of stuck and it had been stuck for a very long time by the time they contacted us. I checked the tracking and it seemed like they weren't going anywhere. I did end up refunding the buyer in full and they, you know, asked if we had any more that they would accept those in lieu of a refund. Unfortunately, we didn't have any more. So I tried to file a claim with the post office because sometimes that'll get the item moving to the buyer. And so I don't know if you have ever tried to do that before, but it is a very long and laborious process to go through that whole, you know, filing the where's my missing item claim on the U.S. Post Office website. So I went through the whole process of doing that on the on USPS.com and I got all the way to the end. I had spent like 10 minutes doing it and then I clicked submit and it took me to some, you know, basically, you know, 404 not found page. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I took a big deep breath and I was like, all right, I'll do it again. So I closed the website, reopened it, went through the whole process again, like 10 minutes, and it did the same thing again. I was like, man, the post office is really doing me in on this one. So I just decided to give up, give up on my $9.79. And unfortunately, just let that one go. Okay, next up was another item we got at the Hoarder Estate Sale. This was an Arden B leopard, women's leopard mid-length coat. I always pick up any leopard print coats that I find because they always sell. And this one was like a velvet leopard jacket. It was very nice. And it sold for $74.99, which was our full asking price. We had paid $8 for that. Next up was a pair of youth size three mucklucks. We had gotten these at a thrift store. We paid $3.24 for them and they sold on best offer for $20 and we got positive feedback on those. Next up was a pair of vintage body scene lace trim tights. These were originally from Sears and they were made in the USA. 
We got these at a garage sale for a dollar and they sold on offer to buyer for $9.58 and we got positive feedback on those. Next up was another package of Avery print to the edge greeting cards. We got these at that same garage sale where we got the other Avery product and these sold for $21.18 on offer to buyer and we also got positive feedback on those. Next up was a pair of vintage men's polo golf navy pants. These sold on offer to buyer. Actually, these sold on best offer for $35. We had paid $3.25 at a thrift store. Unfortunately, the buyer got them and said that he really liked them, but they didn't fit. So he did return those and we've relisted them. Next up was a Susan G. Komen women's t-shirt and it said fighters gonna fight. We got this at a garage sale for a dollar and it sold for $15.99, which was our full asking price. Next up was a eight piece portfolio of art prints by the artist Ansel E. Nunn. We got this from the other business that we own, which is a custom picture frame shop. And this portfolio sold for our full asking price of $129.99. Next up was another item from our other business. This was a postcard. We called it a postcard print because it's it was a high quality postcard that you could also frame as art. So this was called The Loves of Monet by the Texas artist Henrietta Milan, and it sold for $5.98, which was an offer to buyer. Next up was a brand new sealed copy of the DVD on Golden Pond, we got this at a garage sale. We paid $2 for it and it sold on best offer for $10 even. We got positive feedback on that. Next up was one of the free magazines that I got from the lady on next door. This one was Bone Appetit from August, 2014. This one sold for $6.48 on offer to buyer and there was no cost to us on that. We have gone in and recently increased the price of all of our magazines because the price of shipping has gone up so much. So this one that sold for $6.48, I'm not sure we made much of a profit on that. So we decided to go in and increase the price of all of our magazines to make sure that we were making a profit on those. Even though we got them for free, there's still not much of a profit with the cost of shipping these days. Next up was a pair of Banana Republic olive green twill chino pants. We had gotten these at a thrift store and um, I'm not sure how much we paid for them originally because they had been purchased a while ago and then returned because of a fit issue. So I have our, we are all in cost on those because of the original shipping was $10.23. And they sold this time around for $20.99. And so we were just recouping some of our costs with this time uh, selling them, but it does seem like the buyer was happy with them this time. Next up was one of the large garage door Christmas banners that we got at a garage sale. We paid just a dollar for it and this one sold for our full asking price of $29.99. Next up was a lot of two boys jeans. They were a pair of Lee jeans and a pair of Wrangler jeans. These came from the storage unit. So we had paid just 24 cents for them and they sold for $26.99, which was our full asking price. Next up was another item from the storage unit. This was an Alcatel mobile phone, and we also included an HTC wall charger. And we tested this phone and it worked. It sold for $15.98 on offer to buyer, and we had paid just 23 cents for the items in that unit, like I said. Next up was a 19 by 23 Victory Colt firearms poster. This came from the other business that we own and it sold for $16.99, which was our full asking price. Next up was a Cutco knife. This one was a serrated carving knife. We got this at an estate sale for $2 and it sold for $21 even on best offer. And Cutco is definitely an item you wanna pick up no matter the condition of it. We have picked up Cutco knives before where the blade has, the tip of the blade has been broken off Part of the blade has been completely broken off and those knives will still sell. Cutco is definitely something that you wanna pick up no matter the condition, it will always sell. 
Next up was a My Life As, which is uh, the 18 inch doll version that sold at Walmart. This was a toy horse trailer. So it was a large 18 inch doll size horse trailer. This I got from a big lot of 18 inch doll items and other various doll items from a Facebook marketplace buy. It sold for $29.99 and I had averaged out my cost of goods from that buy at 57 cents each. Next up was a Gymboree Pretty Posies white dress. I had gotten this at a garage sale for $2 and this dress sold for our full asking price of $19.99. I've mentioned in previous videos that Gymboree always sells for me, but it is important to look up the month and year and the style name of the Gymboree items because that is important for making the sale on Gymboree. And there are Gymboree fan sites that you can use. I've linked one in a previous video. And if I remember in this video, I'll try to link it below that will help you locate that, um, those style, those style names. Next up was a 1998 McDonald's Happy Meal toy. This one was the Gorilla and Baby. It was loose. It did not have the original packaging. I got this um, from a Facebook marketplace buy that was a bad buy. I had purchased it because I thought it had some Schleich animals in it. And when I got it, I realized I don't think any of them were Schleich animals. So it did not end up being a good buy. But um, my cost of goods per item on this buy was $2.05. So my cost of goods on this gorilla was $2.05. Obviously not a good buy. But this gorilla did manage to sell for $8.99, which is surprising. Somebody wanted it. Um, so we still made money on it. So anyway, there's that. Next up was some fabric remnants that I had left over from a project from a long time ago. This was some leopard print fabric that I had used to recover some chairs a long time ago, and I did not have any use for this little bit of fabric anymore. And it was a very small amount of fabric. It sold for $9.99, but it was really nice fabric. And the lady who purchased it from me had contacted me after she bought it and said she loved it so much that I have any more. And I said, unfortunately, I don't. But she did send me a picture of this beautiful purse that she had made with it. And I always love it when the buyers let me know what they do with our products. So um, I always try to share that with you guys as well. It's always very interesting to me. Next up was a toddler girl's outfit by the brand Behave. It was a Christmas outfit and it had uh, ruffled pants and a cute embroidered shirt. This we got at a garage sale for $3 and it sold for $14.18. We had sold this previously and it had been returned. So we did have some additional shipping cost associated with this purchase. And we were all in on this item for $7.68. Next up was the Bose Smart Soundbar System that we had gotten in the B-Stock liquidation purchase. This was the highest dollar item in that uh, the, the largest item and the highest value item that we had gotten in that liquidation palette. So we were really glad to see this sell. It sold for $472.78. Our per listing cost for the items in that liquidation purchase was $47.18. Next up was one of the empty card wrappers that we sold. I've mentioned these in previous videos, but if you ever make a bulk trading card by and there are the empty wrappers in there. Do not throw those away because the empty wrappers will actually sell. And my husband always kept those to use them as dividers when he kept cards and card boxes. And we will list those and they will sell for us. This one was a 1995 Fleer Ultra Spider-Man wrapper from uh, some of those cards. They sold on offer to buyer for $2.18 and we send those to the buyers using the eBay standard envelope system. So they get sent to the buyer for like 57 cents. So there's very little shipping cost involved in that. And um, we will still make money on, on those sales. It's amazing. And it would be otherwise, you know, trash. Next up was another item from my husband's personal collection, and this was a 1995 Magic the Gathering Ice Age rule book. 
This sold for $6.99. This was something from my husband's personal collection, so we had uh, no cost, and we received positive feedback on this item as well. Next up was a vintage Long Island Furrier's chenille coat, and then it had a fur collar. We had gotten this along with two other fur coats at an estate sale. The other two fur coats were like fully fur. Um, we had paid $100 for all three of them, so I had broken down our cost of each of these fur coats as $33 on our spreadsheet. Uh, this particular one sold for $72 even on best offer, and uh, we still have the other two listed in our store. Next up was a fantasy novelty $100,000 Confederate note. I don't know where these came from or like what the purpose of them ever was, but we found a whole big stack of them in the other business that we own. And so I just, you know, listed them and like described what they were basically. And we've sold a few of them here and there. This one sold on best offer for $8.99 and we got positive feedback on it. Next up was a really cool vintage 1950s Gene Autry toy champion gun holster, three wooden bullets, the rope, and the bo the original box that it came in. Uh, I did show this in an estate sale haul, and I'll link that video in the description box below. I was really surprised that it was still at this estate sale. I picked it up for just $10 and we put it on auction and it had a lot of watchers, but it did sell for its opening bid of $49.99. One thing to note, if you do ever sell toy guns, even if they are vintage, you have to have an orange tip on the end of them. So we did go to the trouble of affixing an orange tip on the end of this gun to be in compliance with federal law. That's actually a federal law. It's not an eBay rule. So be mindful of that because that, you know, is obviously a very important thing to follow. Last but not least, I will go over all of the collectible cards that sold this particular week. We did not sell any high value cards. Low, the low value cards that sold for us, and when I say low value, I'm talking about cards valued at $10 or under. We sold seven cards in total for a total dollar value of $22.33. So that wraps up our sales for the week of October 22nd through 28th. I hope you enjoyed this what sold video. If you did, let us know by hitting the like button. And if you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing with the notification bell turned on so you can be kept informed of all of our latest content. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you on the flip side.